What's up, folks? I'm Justin Kana. Welcome to DOD episode nine. But this morning, there's buzz over a new mashup at the Fresno Grizzly Baseball Stadium. All right. What is it? All right. Here it is. It oh, is the whoa. chickle. A what? It is a chicken stuffed pickle. Has anyone actually had one of these before? It's the recent member to the weird food trend family, and it's called the chickle. So when I was writing my menu this week, which I do once a week, I write a tasting menu out, I wanted to do a dish of lamb and cucumber. Plus this pop culture reference is a little bit too good. So I'm gonna do my spin on a chickle with lamb and make a dope recipe of Rogan Josh at the same time. So I Amazoned a copy of this bad boy to my place and I'm pretty excited about it. Not just because the recipes are super legit, but because there's a lot of interesting Indian history in it as well. So this book has been my friend of late. We're gonna take the recipe from inside this book and season it up with a few extra things that I think go really well with cucumber. So let's get right into it. Let's start by seasoning our lamb. So I have a cut from the shoulder here, as well as a shank. And I'm already like right off the bat going away from tradition here by using a cut that's on the bone. Apparently the recipe I have in this book tells me to use boneless and cubed lamb pieces. I really just think the bone-in braising style tastes a lot better. So we got the salt on the lamb. We're gonna let those hang out and become friends. Next up, I'm taking about four cloves of garlic as well as about an inch long piece of ginger. And I'm just gonna grate those two together into a paste. Dash that aside, how about that? Next up, let's pickle our cucumber, shall we? So I made a really nice pickle liquid here of a little bit of rice wine vinegar, apple cider vinegar, water, sugar, some salt, black peppercorns, crushed garlic, as well as some mint stems in there. Not entirely sure how that's gonna turn out, but that's why I taste the stuff on the show, not you, right? So we're just gonna take this cucumber, cut a small piece of it like that, split it in two, and we're just gonna scoop out the seeds. So this is doing two things. It's taking the seeds out as well as making room for our lamb later on. Brought that pickle liquid to a boil. The cucumbers go in a small Ziploc bag here and I'll just pour this hot pickle liquid over the top. We're also gonna set that aside to come down to room temperature on its own. If you're confused as to why I did it like that, I want enough pickle liquid to surround the vegetable, but I don't wanna make like two liters of pickle liquid. So I basically use the bag to take away that negative space and make sure the pickle liquid cucumber touching action is happening inside the bag. Next up, saute pan goes down. We're gonna use this to sear our lamb. We got a healthy amount of oil going in. This is gonna do two things. It's gonna make sure we get a lot of nice color as well as we're gonna use this oil to toast our spices afterwards. So we're rocking this on like medium, medium high heat and we're literally getting all sides of the lamb. You can see I have the shank standing straight up. I want as much color on it as I can. Once both cuts are super nice and golden, we'll take those out and now what we basically have is a roasted lamb oil and that's what we're gonna to use to toast our spices in. Time to get spicy. So if you caught the thumbnail slash intro part of this video, I laid out some spices really nice. I don't know why people do that. It is probably the worst way to organize yourself ever to just dump spices out on a table. I luckily made sure that I just measured what I need so I just scraped it all up and this is gonna go into our oil get all toasty together. So what I have in the pan now is four cloves, half of a cinnamon stick, some green cardamom pods, a little bit of cayenne, and now I'm gonna add our ginger garlic paste. Roast that up super nice. Got some coriander seeds in there as well. It smells so good. I'm also scraping a little bit of that lamb fond up off the bottom. Also added a little bit of cumin in here because I think that's a really nice uh, cucumber combo. Cucumber, lamb, and cumin goes really, really well together. All right, so our lamb can go back inside now. And now we'll add some yogurt. So I have a really nice, high quality Washington State uh, organic yogurt. I'm convinced that whatever flavor nuances you would have from a nice high quality yogurt get lost when you cook it anyways, so just use whatever is most convenient for you. Another pinch of salt, another layer of flavor there. So we're going to simmer this for about 10 minutes and continue to check it as it goes down. We want to make sure that anything that sticks to the bottom gets scraped right up and we want all of the water to evaporate out. This is a pretty rustic dish, so the sticking on the bottom is supposed to happen, it's okay. Okay, so you want the actual meat to turn reddish brown, apparently, which has more or less happened. We are reduced all the way down, there's no more water left. 
The recipe says to add a pinch of sugar. I'm gonna use brown sugar. I'm gonna add a cup of hot water. And now the plan is to pop a lid on this bad boy, braise it for about 45 minutes, then add a little bit of garam masala spice mix, and then braise it for another 10 minutes, and then we'll give it a taste. Okay, so that took a little bit longer than I thought, but the cuts are all finished, and now I'm gonna taste both and see which one, it's basically how they differ. Piece from the shank first, and now for the shoulder. So the shoulder tastes more like lamb, like it has a stronger lamb flavor, but the shank is definitely juicier. I'm gonna take the leg pieces, just because I, can, I know I can get longer strands of them. And I'm gonna use a technique from modernist cuisine and deep fry the long shreds of braised lamb and then incorporate that into some shredded pieces of the shoulder and we're basically gonna end up making a carnitas style Rogan Josh. We don't get any bones or whole spices in this mix. So we've got that all shredded up, add a touch of our sauce. So I've got our fried crispy lamb here. That's gonna get mixed in with the braised pieces and the sauce. Also take a second to portion our cucumber. If you're doing something where you want nice clean lines, it's way easier to do this after cooking. Because if I were to cut this before and then I cook it, the vegetable sometimes kind of twists and turns and gets banged up. I just went with a nice clean oblique cut with our little filling cavity in the middle. So that cucumber goes down on the plate. Just had a part where the cucumber didn't want to stay down, so I shaved off a small piece on the bottom. Now I have a question for you, because I have two different garnishes that I want to do with this, but I can't decide which one. So I'm going to plate both, and then in the comments you can tell me which one you liked better. So here I've essentially made two versions of the same dish, and I'm gonna let you guys kind of decide which garnish you thought looked a little bit better, uh, because you obviously can't taste it. Elon Musk has yet to invent uh, smell vision which he really needs to get on. So this one is a little bit of a shoestring potato style garnish with a little bit of fresh chiffonaded mint, and then this one here is a little bit of salted cucumber pieces, and then the old school mint chips that you make in the microwave with the plastic wrap on. The potato one's really good. It's a little bit messy to eat, but the texture from the potato is really nice. Cucumber garnish one is a lot cleaner. You don't have the distraction from the flavor of the potato. And wind chips are actually really good. So let me know your thoughts. I'd love to hear what you have to say about both garnishes. I'll pick one person down below that comments to get extra points for the day. Actually, you know what? Hang on. Let's give away a completely unrelated cookbook. So this is one that's on my shelf that I haven't looked at in a long time. It is a old school Juan Ducasse book. Uh, called Flavors of France. So if you want more than just extra points for the day, go ahead and share this video, tag me, and I will find you and randomly pick one person to give this book away to. There's no subscriber challenge this time. I know some of you got a little bit pissed off for my last giveaway little thing. This one's super easy. Just go ahead and comment which garnish you liked better, tag me, and share the video. I will decide by the end of Sunday night. Or don't do it, just take the extra points for the day. This has been Dish of the Day, episode nine. I'm Justin Kana. have a good one.